if we can speak on continue to speak on the subject of mental health, uh, there are many reasons why people develop mental health. Uh, some are generic, some are biological, uh, some are like uh, results of traumatic experience. Uh, in the subject of the Somali community, uh, we have uh, like a history of forced mig uh, migration that are directly related to the conflict that happened in the 90s. Uh, and many of our elderly and especially our parents have suffered through that and their lives have severely changed. Uh, do you think mental health and especially uh, uh, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder, PTSD, is a big elephant in the room? Mm -hmm. Um, so mental health, and it's very much tied to determinants, of, uh, social determinants of health and uh, trauma, conflict, war zones, or any form of trauma, whether it's war zones, including anti-black racism and Islamophobia has a dramatic um, effect on the mental health of the Somali community and a larger aspect of it, the black community. There've been studies done actually both on the Holocaust survivors four generation after, as well as Black American um, and the experience with anti-Black racism. And they actually showed that in the DNA, you inherit trauma from your grandfather, your great grandfather. And so the trauma is actually generational, it's intergenerational, it carries through. So it doesn't surprise me that trauma is also equally inherited in the Somali community um, because of the civil war, because of our, the experiences that a lot of our parents and grandparents have gone through because of genocide, because of the military and the way that they treated certain ethnic tribes. So that all of that is really impacting. So when you come to this country and the history of Somali communities and settle, settling into this country is one also equally of an policy violence where the conservative government in the 1990s basically allowed people, they were legally in this country, they were legal and documented and refugees, but then suddenly created an, um, a bill, I think it was Bill C-36, which basically made the Somali community undocumented. And that had a tremendous impact on their quality of life because they could not access rent. They can't rent in the open market because no one is going to rent you when they don't know your status if you're going to disappear on them in, in, in a week or in a day. And they could not in, go into higher education. Unemployment was extremely, I think at one time it was about 70% uh, of Somali adults at the time were unemployed. There were people of all educational levels and training, and they could not, all the bridging programs, all the different support, if you compare the support that the Bosnian received and the Serbian received when they came into this country, the support that even Syrian and refugees have received, it was um, like comparing that, like looking at that historical trajectory, and I think the Bosnian and the Serbian, the Kosovo's were the closest people when it came into the Somali community. The Somalian, the Vrani, and the Tamil community did not get any of that support. It took my mother and many other Somalis 10 years to get their permanent residence and become Canadian citizens. And that was a reality in the Somali community. So poverty is not an accident. Somali people living in community housing is not an accident. Somali young people being susceptible to the criminal justice system, it's not accident. It's very much designed by a very white supremacist system that is making sure that certain population, in this case, the black populations, is economically depraved. They don't have the same access. They don't have the same opportunity. And if we look at mental health, even in terms of access to mental health, black individuals are more likely to be restrained the, the freedom taken away in terms of like to be kept within 72 or 48 hours without even any medical justification. And that is some of the statistical data that Black Health Alliance have collected. Black people are less likely to seek mental health support because of the stigma. Because when, when any of them, when they seek mental health support, they don't really get it. There's always a suspect that, oh, maybe you have an addiction issue. There's other issues um, that comes into forth rather than actually treating uh, the individuals that sought your services as they are as a patient rather than uh, racializing or criminalizing them. Um, there's, there's not much of a culturally appropriate mental health services um, because many cultures, including the Somali culture, they look at, there's a lot of stigma, obvious cultural stigma around mental health, but they also look at mental health as a form of what can we do as a community? What are the alternative 
forms of community and traditions that we can incorporate, including faith-based, because if you look at Islamic history, um, actually the first mental health hospital in human history was built um, a couple of hundred years ago in Iraq by a Muslim empire, right? By Muslim scientists and doctors. And so we have a very long traditions in our own history um, of dealing with mental health, but there's a disconnect that kind of an education and historical nuance within our, our own tradition. And so in terms of mental health, it's really, it's very much complex and nuanced and mental health is determined by your income. Uh, it could be your neighborhood, violence, gun violence, death of a loved ones has a tremendous impact on your mental well-being, um, struggling financially, uh, the sense of taking away somebody's dignity, which is really something that impacted a lot of Somali fathers who were not able to get a decent income to support their families, uh, which also contributed to the breakdown of a lot of Somali families where fathers left the home and the mothers had to handle uh, there's a study recently released that black mothers or black women are more likely to suffer from cardiac arrest or heart disease than compared to black men because many times the somali community are not unique in the black community black women are really the backbone of the black community and many of them take on a lot of roles that they shouldn't really take on but they have to in spite of it because they have to deal with their community they have to deal with their children and they have to step up in places where uh, a partner doesn't exist or an, a, a black or Somali father or whomever and is not there for them.